new audit reveals the city is hiring undocumented and unqualified officers to make up for its staffing shortage. 45 of officers with the San Francisco Police Department were flagged for missing information. This includes fingerprints, proof of citizenship, graduation records, and incomplete psych exams and background checks. Former San Francisco police officer Joel Aylworth joins us now. Joel, I have a question before we dig into any of this, but how is this legal? <laughs> it's it, exactly how is it legal? I was just talking with someone else before uh, just yesterday and I was never allowed these things. I mean, the background process is very intense. It's about a six to six months to a year process. I mean, how does someone just, oh, I, I don't know how the psych eval got lost. Like, that's impossible because that person has to tell your background investigator before you can go on. So how any of this is even possible, I have no idea. So you worked at the academy with the new recruits, the would-be police officers. So did you see a decline in the, the type of officer that wanted to be with the police department? Tell us what you saw. Yeah, we would see it all the time. In, in the training staff, we were we were being told, too, we had to lower the standards. And so if you look across the board, I mean, anybody from the range staff, you know, where you have to fire your weapon, or even driving, EVOC, they were told to change their times. We were changing the standards in push-ups. Like, you know, we're not getting a lot of women. Let's change the push-up standards so that more women can get involved. Not that not having more women is not a good thing, but the point being the standards were consistently being lowered and at the academy, when I first got hired in 2013, we were running academies, five academies a year with 50 plus uh, applicants. Now they are lucky to run three a year with filling that academy with 20 applicants and the applicants they're getting are absolutely atrocious. Yeah, I mean, the fact that they're lowering the standards for physical fitness, uh, the mental fitness, that, that's not good for police officers. How long had you started to see this decline for? at least over the last five years, I would say. And you have to remember, I mean, this is the same department that fired myself and many others for being unvaxxed. They lost about 40 to 80 officers who were over five plus years. Right now, the department has probably 90% of them are two to three years on. So it's a very junior force. And they lost a good amount of us that were veteran cops, that were FTOs, that were training others in the department, and they lost that for some ridiculous mandates. And now you see people like Ronan backtracking and say, it's funny because these politicians, they all wear masks, and so they forget what masks they were wearing two to three years ago, and now they're changing their tune. You know, like I said before uh, I started talking to you, the nerve that she has to say that she's told there are no officers that can respond to her neighborhood when she was one that was backing to defund them. So my question, when you saw this audit come out and you saw that there were undocumented people who were police officers and you got fired because you didn't want to get a vaccine, how'd that make you feel? I mean, it, it's just, honestly, I just smile at this point. It's the irony of the SFPD. I mean, and we've known this for many, many years. I mean, I can tell you stories where there was, there were people wanted, literally wanted by the FBI and they still hired this person. And it wasn't like till later that backgrounds found out after this person was in the academy, was booted out by another department. And they actually, then they finally, you know, kicked this person out. I mean, there's countless stories like this. Jill, hold on. Uh, it's who no was surprise. wanted by the FBI? Someone who was a police officer or what in the academy? There was someone, I can't remember exactly, but there was someone wanted, I believe, wanted by the FBI or was on the FBI's terrorism hit list. And that person somehow still made it through backgrounds, made it to the academy until it was later that person was removed. So, I mean, there's stories like this, uh, countless stories like this. So how dangerous is it, not only for you guys, because these would potentially be your partners on the street, but really for the community when they don't have adequate background checks. You don't know who these people are. So talk about how dangerous that is for you guys and the community. Yeah, it's very dangerous because as a police officer, you put your life in hands in the, in the hands of another person. And there's, so there has to be a lot of trust and a lot of integrity. And one of the biggest key components when hiring or going through the academy is trust and integrity. And again, I can think of a story just right now where, an, where, a, where a training officer actually caught some a recruit in a lie and said, this guy needs to go, wrote up the paperwork. And the staff was like, well, you know, we're hurting for numbers, all this stuff. They didn't want to do it. And so again, when it comes to integrity, if you don't catch this in the academy, guess what? 
you're going to see that manifest on the street. Then you're going to see some scandal in the news that this police officer didn't do this. And all of us at SFPD, the I don't want to say the quote unquote good ones, because but the people that have higher standards and morals are not surprised. We're shrugging our heads going, we could have told you that, but you didn't do anything. The higher ups weren't doing anything and they were letting this behavior continue. So it's terrible. Um, I wouldn't want to be a San Francisco uh, citizen or re re um, a resident right now. It's a terrible time. Really quickly, before I let you go, if the rules changed, would you go back? <laughs> we'll see what happens when that when that time comes. I'll tell you what. I always tell everyone I'm living in the moment right now. Uh, I know we're going to win, but uh, when that when that time comes, uh, I'll make my decision. But right now, I have no decision to make. Yeah. Okay. Joel Aylworth, thanks so much for your time.